Over the last couple of years, Darren and I have been talking a lot about soil fertility, mainly because, hey, if times get tough, margins are squeezed, you start looking at, well, what's my biggest expense? My biggest expense or investment, however you want to look at it, is fertilizer. But how much do we know about fertilizer? Okay, we want you to take a great soil test, and that's nice. But how about during the season? All during the season, we want to monitor how our plants are doing. So we use plant tissue analysis, and we suggest you do as well. When we think about fertility in fields, it has to start with a good soil fertility program. We can't just plan on, you know, foliar fertilizer is going to take care of everything. It's just too hard to time that right. It's too hard to get enough volume on of nutrients. On normal crops. If you're yes. in specialty crops and you have irrigation and you can fertilize one or two times a week, that's a different deal. But we're talking corn, soybeans, and wheat here. Yeah, and so I think about it this way. We'll do the best we can with our soil test. We'll get that soil fertility program balanced out the best we think we can. Then we've got to come back with plant tissue analysis. I consider plant tissue analysis the report card for the farmer. It really tells us how good is our soil fertility program, how good are our soils at supplying the nutrients that we need throughout that season. Because we may look and see, you know, there's a lot of parts per million of potassium or phosphorus out in our field, but are they actually getting into our crop when our crop needs it? We've got tie-up issues. We've also got issues with moisture availability. When you think about, oh, we had a drought for two or three weeks or four weeks, depending on where you're at, that's pretty tough for plants to take in nutrients when they don't have the water in the soil to make those nutrients available. So as we're watching that plant grow throughout the season, we can track it with plant tissue analysis to see, okay, where are we at and what are we short in? Is there something that we can foliar feed? Is there something we need to tweak to next year's fertility program? All those answers we can get from plant tissue analysis. If we don't do it, we're left guessing at harvest time. Hey, I was shooting for 180 bushel corn, I got 160, and what's the answer gonna be? If you ask anybody in your neighborhood, they're gonna say, well, you know, we just didn't get enough rain, or we didn't have enough heat this year, or something that you can't control. Guess what? There are things that you can control that are going to make that difference in your field. When you look at your yield monitor maps across any of your fields, you're going to see wide fluctuations in yield and see, oh, I had 220 bushel corn in that field, but I also had some 80. What's the difference there? This is where plant tissue analysis comes in. So if you talk to some of the top yielding farmers in the country, they're going to tell you, hey, we tissue sample once a week, every week throughout the growing season. You can certainly do that. Here's what we found, though, and what we do on our own farm. We only sample for 8 to 10 weeks in each crop. The grass crops take up a lot of their nutrients relatively early in the season. So we're going to start as soon as corn and wheat come out of the ground and we're going to test for 8 to 10 consecutive weeks. And we're going to take the same exact spot and mark it with either GPS or a flag. What we'll do is either using satellite imagery or using our yield maps, we can go select the worst area of the field and the best area of the field. And this is where we always say you should start. Now when we get to the broadleaf crops, we're talking soybeans or sunflowers or something like that, we would say you probably don't need to test that first month. If you want to, go ahead. But what I do is I'd wait a month, you know, from the time those broadleaf crops emerge, and then I would start my eight to 10 weeks. And what you're gonna learn from this is you're gonna see the overall trend. And I agree that you can do some foliar feeding, you can do some side dressing, but what we're typically using this for is to make an overall adjustment for our program going into the next year. So now we've got all this data, and yeah, we might do a little bit of tweaking as we go throughout the season, but most of it is to find out, did I do a good job with my soil fertility program? If I didn't, I gotta start making changes. What we suggest you do is do the same day every week, do the same time, every time you go out there so you have some consistency. We do Monday, 8 a.m., okay? We like that time because then we, we pull those plant tissue samples, put them in a paper bag, and then send them in for analysis. We have the analysis back by Thursday or Friday. So it's great, it's timely, we love it, and it's something that's incredibly important and has helped us make a lot more money and get a lot more yield on our farm, and it absolutely can for you as well. And the other thing too, it's not just about your profitability, it's about our impact on the environment. And if we're out there just guessing at what's going on in our field, we say, yeah, the crop looks a little yellow. Let's add some more nitrogen to it. It may not be nitrogen at all. Yep. It may be sulfur, it may be a micronutrient. Who knows what it is? But we're losing yield, we're wasting money on fertilizer, and we're not doing the right thing for the environment. By just doing a little bit of testing, you're going to learn so much this year, it's crazy. And all of a sudden you say, wow, I'm using less fertilizer, I'm getting higher yield, and I'm doing a better job for the environment too. While you're out doing plant tissue sampling, what you might find is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm, coming up next.